Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for being here. So there's a group of us as Republicans that we have looked seriously at the Javier Becerra nomination and do not see him as being qualified for this task, nor the right person for this. In fact, several of us have sent a letter to the White House saying, please rescind this and be able to send us something. Obviously, he's an attorney by trade in the middle of a pandemic. This is not the time to be able to put an attorney leading health and human services uh, to be able to coordinate all the health response that we've got to have. But we also have other issues, like the issues about life and about conscience. California is not known to be able to protect life. In fact, while Javier Becerra was leading as Attorney General, he led the charge to be able to force pro-life entities to have to put a poster on the wall in pro-life clinics advertising abortion, literally forcing them while they're there talking about adoption uh, of children to say, no, here's another option for you to be able to abort this child. That is over the top. That was argued all the way to the Supreme Court, where California lost that case in the Supreme Court uh, for obvious reasons as a violation of speech. Uh, as Attorney General, he also was now active in protecting the conscience rights of health care workers. We're a health care worker that told their hospital or clinic uh, and l let them know, uh, I'm opposed to uh, assisted suicide, I'm opposed to abortion. I came into health care to protect life, not take life. Those individuals were not protected by the state of California and by Javier Becerra and his team. The Trump administration had to impose penalties on them to be able to push them to actually say you have to follow the law. Ironically enough, federal law that requires entities have conscience protections that Javier Becerra pushed the other direction on. Now Javier Becerra would be the individual then to now protect others in other states after he refused to do that in California. That's a very odd situation to say we're going to have somebody that is elected in the past not to protect conscience rights, not to follow federal law, now is the one in charge of federal law in that case. That is not a good fit for us as Americans, and it's ironic that the person that would lead health and human services doesn't see every child as human and worthy of protection. We'd like to be able to see that for our next leader in that. I want to introduce some of my colleagues. I'll also be able to step up, and then I'll close this off uh, in just a moment. So Steve Danks from Montana. Thank you, Senator Langford. I, uh, I voted already for several of President Biden's nominees uh, for the Cabinet. But uh, Attorney General Javier Becerra is too radical, too extreme for me to support his nomination. I was on the Finance Committee yesterday, asked him a very simple question. He said, are there any, any restrictions you might place on abortion, any. And it was crickets, it was radio silence. He could not come up with any answer, and I pressed him on Down syndrome babies, gender selection, partial birth abortion, even infanticide as it relates to the Baby Born Alive bill. And he dodged it and just demonstrated that he's taken the most extreme views as it relates to abortion, way outside the mainstream of America. Furthermore, as Attorney General of California, he advocated for the decriminalization of illegal crossings into our country. That's open borders. That is way outside the mainstream of this country. That is the most radical and far left position you can take in the immigration debate. In third, when he was in the House, uh, he advocated strongly for taxpayer funded health care for illegal immigrants. In fact, he was at loggerheads with President Obama then, to the left of President Obama. When I think about somebody who, if he is appointed to this position and confirmed, will oversee more spending than any other cabinet position. The Secretary of HHS oversees more spending than any other cabinet position. It's about $1.2, $1.3 trillion. Javier Becerra is too radical, too liberal for me to support him in this nomination. I'll turn it over here to Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Senator Daines. One of the things that we do know is that Javier Becerra, whether he was in the U.S. House or whether he was Attorney General in California, he has had a career-long crusade against those that are in support of religious liberty and those that are in support of life. He has had a career-long crusade against the provisions of religious liberty and the provisions of pro-life. That is what we know, and it is a disqualifier 
when you look at what transpires with HHS, with their budget, with the impact that it would have on the lives of America. Now, my colleagues have talked a little bit about his stance on abortion. There are not restrictions that he favors, and he is outside of where most American women are on that issue, and indeed where most Americans are on the issue of abortion. He also is for taxpayer funding of abortion. We know this from his history, his time in the House, and his work in California. We also know how he has brought lawsuits and pushed lawsuits that would disfavor life. Add to all of this the fact that in a time of a pandemic, here is someone who is a trial lawyer who has absolutely zero public health experience. Zero public health experience. He is not qualified to take the reins as the Secretary of HHS, and we would encourage President Biden to withdraw his nomination. I want to turn it over to Senator Cornyn. Thank you, Marshall. I, too, have voted for a number of President uh, Biden's nominees to his cabinet position, and I, my default position is to give some deference uh, to the President on selection of his closest advisors. Uh, Mr. Becerra is a, is a charming person, personally. He's got a wonderful story, but he's simply not qualified uh, to serve in this position. There may be other positions in the Cabinet that he could serve in. His, uh, primarily, um, his primary professional experience and training is as a lawyer, as you've heard, as the Attorney General of California. But I'm was very concerned during the testimony that I heard that he uh, simply refuses to acknowledge that he led the effort to enforce the Obamacare contraceptive mandate against nuns. Uh, he just flat misrepresented his position. And of course that makes no sense to uh, a reasonable objective observer. Um, beyond that, he is, uh, he's embraced uh, some of the most radical uh, positions that you can imagine when it comes to the role of the federal government. You heard uh, Senator Blackburn and others talk about uh, the Democratic concerted effort to eliminate the Hyde Amendment, which prohibits the use of taxpayer funds uh, for abortion, something that the vast majority of Americans believe is a reasonable limitation on abortion rights. And uh, so, in short, let me just say Mr. Becerra is a partisan culture warrior. He's not qualified to hold this position, and indeed some of his strongly held personal and political convictions, I think, disqualify him for this job as well. Turn it over to Senator Hyde Smith. Thank you, Senator Corning. <clears throat> this nomination certainly, certainly concerns me, not only as a mother, not only as a woman, but as a legislator has worked very hard through this COVID pandemic, and to think we have a nominee from President Biden that has zero experience in any healthcare field. His experience is filing lawsuits to go against anything that is pro-life. And as the AG in California, he used that position to do that there. He will use it here. And it, uh, it's still pretty incredible that his name was put up. I do not know him personally, but I certainly know his record. And his record scares the American people. I know it scares the people in Mississippi, but it is such proof that this is definitely not the person that we need heading this agency. Thank you. I turn it over to Senator Cruz. Thank you. We're in the midst of a global pandemic. For a year now, we've faced COVID-19 in the United States and across the world. Over 500,000 Americans have lost their lives. Over 42,000 Texans have lost their lives to COVID-19. Joe Biden says the top priority of the Biden administration is to defeat this pandemic. And yet the Biden nominee to lead the Health and Human Services Agency is an individual who is woefully unqualified 
and has absolutely zero experience in anything related to health care. Javier Becerra is not a doctor. He's not a scientist. He's never worked in health care. He's never worked at a hospital. He has no experience in virology. He has no experience in pharmaceuticals. As far as I can tell, the only connection Mr. Becerra has to health care is that he sued the Little Sisters of the Poor. In the midst of a global pandemic, we need a leader who can actually lead the Health and Human Services Department to defeat this pandemic. The fact that Joe Biden was willing to nominate Javier Becerra illustrates that the priorities of the Biden administration are all about partisan politics. The reason Becerra got this nomination is he's a left-wing activist. He's a trial lawyer. And he spent a career as a radical pro-abortion activist attacking and persecuting anyone who's pro-life and pushing an extreme left-wing agenda. That's why he got the nomination. In an ordinary time, that might be one thing. But this isn't an ordinary time. And I will say this, if any Republican president nominated as Secretary of HHS someone with no health care experience, who wasn't a doctor, with no scientific experience, with no background at all, in the middle of a global pandemic, that Republican president would be laughed out of the room. It would be absurd. And yet it appears an awful lot of Democrats are willing just to rubber stamp putting a partisan extremist in this job rather than someone with experience. Let me know one other aspect. We are in the midst of an incredible logistical challenge of delivering hundreds of millions of vaccines. Tens of millions of vaccines have already been administered, but hundreds of millions need to be administered. Mr. Becerra has zero experience in logistics and distribution, in the mechanics of helping combat this pandemic. And I hope that the Senate will stand together in a bipartisan manner and say, we need an expert, we need a scientist, we need someone who knows something about health care leading the Health and Human Services Department. Good afternoon, everybody. As a practicing obstetrician for 25 years, I delivered thousands of babies, the honor of a lifetime. I never would have dreamed that I would come to the halls of Congress and have to fight harder to protect the lives of babies than I in the, in the, did in those delivery rooms for all those deliveries. I never dreamed that I'd be here standing as a senator having to protect the conscience objections of people in the healthcare industry, a, 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 something that we should all be respecting. Uh, can you imagine just the number of young people that will not go into health care, doctors and nurses, if they can't have a conscience objection uh, to not participate in certain procedures like abortions? I just don't think that America thinks that's right. I think it takes away our freedom of religion and, our, and, our, and so many of our freedoms, we can't see this happening. This HHS secretary nomination is an extremist on abortion. He sued the Little Sisters of the Poor and has zero health care experience. There's no way I can support him. I think we owe too much to the American public to have somebody with health care experience that can see us through uh, the COVID virus and then and on to bigger health care issues as well. Thank you so much. So we have a bill uh, that deals with conscience protections. You, you would think that just because we have federal law that HHS would protect the conscience of individuals because it's already federal law that health care workers have conscience protections. With Javier Becerra and what he did not do when he was in California protecting health care workers there, we have a bill that actually adds some teeth to federal law to say that individuals, if their conscience is violated and their health care location requires them to participate in assisted suicide or an abortion, uh, that they can then have a private right of action against that institution so that they have some way to be able to enforce their rights if the federal government won't protect their rights. So we have that bill to be able to add that to current federal law because we believe that federal law should be enforced and not have a situation where a new secretary of HHS comes in and says, yes, I know it's federal law, but I fought it when I was in California and I'm not going to enforce it when I actually come here. He actually called some of the conscience protections when he was in California illegal, but they actually are federal law here. That is not someone who's going to line up and say they're going to actually follow the law once they get here. 
So be glad to be able to take a couple of questions if you have it. I'd like to restrict our questions just to the area of Javier Becerra and conscious protection. I know there's a lot of issues, but that's why this particular group gathered today. Yes, Sir, I wanted to ask in general, this has been a tough week for Biden's uh, nominees. Do you think that Tandon and Becerra should rescind their nominations? I, I think they both should be rescinded on that, and that's been pretty clear. And uh, we've been pretty clear on that. In fact, I've written letters to the Biden team to say, please send us somebody that's a scientist, that's a doctor, that's somebody in the middle of the pandemic can actually help us deal with the health care issue. Senator, do you think there are going to be any Republican votes for Becerra at this point? Don't know. Not of the group up here, I can assure you of that, but I've not, I've not counted everyone else. My question is uh, actually for each gentleman, Senators Marshall and Cruz in particular, you guys have voted against, I think you're up to nine Biden cabinet nominees at this point. I think you might be at seven. Why should people look at this as a good faith complaint about this nominee and not just a desire to vote against every person Joe Biden puts forward? Well, there are a number of nominees who have been extreme, and, and you're right, I voted against a number of them. I voted for the defense secretary, but the others I voted against. Um, there is a difference between some of those nominations and Javier Becerra's. His record, he's utterly unqualified uh, for the position. He has no health care background. He has nothing even credible. I, you know, I don't know if he stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night, but, but, but he has... The man has no background whatsoever, and this is the preeminent crisis facing the country. He also has a radical record that stands out. Uh, there are a number of nominees whose records are troubling, but you take, for example, Tony Blinken, the nominee for Secretary of State. I voted against Tony Blinken, but I also spent an hour and a half in my office talking with Tony. I look forward to working with him as Secretary of State, and I'm hopeful I voted against him and a number of Biden nominees because they had executed a pivot towards China and a softening towards communist China that I think is a mistake. Um, there's a difference between that and a nominee who is woefully unqualified. And I would note, none of Becerra's defenders have come back with anything and said, no, 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 he does know something about health care. He knows something about medicine. He knows something about science. You know, the Democrats, as a talking point, like to say they care about science. And yet, in the middle of a global pandemic, they want someone leading the Health and Human Services Agency who has zero scientific background. That's, that's unacceptable on the merits, and, and it shows, I, I think, the wrong priorities. Senator Marshall, why, yeah, why is this a good faith no vote if you're going to vote no on basically all of the nominees anyway? Well, I think I'll probably end up about 50-50, but the general theme here is unqualified and extreme. The people of Kansas sent me to here to do a job, and I'm doing that job to the very best of my ability, using my very best judgment to make sure that we have the people in place to help get us through this crisis, to help to get our economy going again, figuring out how do we get shots in people's arms, jot people back to work, and getting kids back to school. Those are my, my immediate goals. Thank you. Yeah. I have we had the hearings with him he's had two back-to-back -back hearings but I've not personally met with him have met him before and had the opportunity to be able to interact with him in their last course I yes. have one more and this okay. is just more general for HHS we know right now that um, there are illegal immigrants who are either in border detention facilities or wherever they are that are receiving COVID testing and COVID vaccines is that something you would be concerned about increasing with Becerra um, heading HHS? I, I would assume HHS will be very involved in the COVID testing, COVID vaccines, and he's been pretty outspoken that uh, Becerra wants to also have health care for everyone who's not legally present here in the country. Obviously, it's an enormous shift for us and an enormous policy change that Congress has not addressed in the past. But he's been pretty outspoken that that is a desire that he wants to be able to see. It is an area that I personally challenge other nominees on, like DHS. Uh, to say, hey, I have a concern that we have restrictions on people flying in from Central America in their tests, but now you're allowing people to just physically cross the border uh, that have a different standard on that. That's a concern that's a DHS concern. HHS obviously handles the children once they leave the facility and they go into their care uh, because we have a lot. We've had a surge of unaccompanied minors uh, since Biden has come in. Uh, they've gone back to the locations that Democrats in the past said were kids in cages that were actually facilities built by the Obama administration that were okay for the Obama administration to use, but were not okay for the Trump administration to use. The Biden administration is back to using them again. It, so it's just this bizarre thing, and they're basically saying, well, we have to keep kids separated, but they're putting them in the exact same location that they criticized the Trump administration for doing. That's HHS that oversees the care of those children once they leave there and actually get placement. So that is important to us long term. 
James, can I add one, yep. one thing there? Is I, I uh, took the liberty to go to the border with the group of doctors in Congress, I guess two years ago. And this is a problem before COVID even. We have a limited number of resources. And, and, it, and before there was COVID, there was tuberculosis and hepatitis, other types of contagious disease, which are more prominent uh, in, in Mexico and Central America as well. So it was a stress before. And then it just becomes a volume issue, trying to keep up with, with all the numbers of people. Our, uh, our folks down there, our doctors, our nurses, are very committed doing the best they can but but there's a certain amount of volume that we're able to do and then this increased numbers is going to stress them even more and then now we throw COVID on top of that as well just adding to the the situation here I absolutely believe we can get to herd immunity by April or May uh, we, we now know that the vaccinations are 75 80 percent effective after one shot we've got the we've already distributed 95 million vaccinations I think we'll make it to that hundred and hundred days pretty easily maybe even next week as well and we have the potential to do three million vaccinations a day can easily get to herd immunity if our president's team and, and our governors do their job thank you thanks y'all thanks, thanks so very much